The Arduino connector is a project that allows you to use Arduinos or Arduino compatible boards as I.O. expansion for Linux CNC. The goal of this project is to enable you to easily build a CNC control panel or handheld MPG. Buttons, knobs, potentiometers, encoders, joysticks and matrix keyboards, RGB LEDs, PVM outputs and much more are supported by the software. They can easily be configured and in this video series I will show you how. Hi and welcome back. I'm Alex and this is the art of tinkering. So the next feature I want to show you is um, uh, using a uh, matrix keyboard. Um, so oftentimes when you retrofit an old CNC machine they use these uh, CNC keyboards. And um, they are very often based on matrix keyboards and uh, we can of course use them with our new Eno as well. Um, these can be retrofitted if you have if you find them in your machine, but sometimes you can also get them for I would not say cheap money, but you can get them used if you are take a look at uh, your it's uh, websites where you can often get uh, used stuff. Uh, just keep a look out for like CNC control panel or CNC keyboard, something like that. And you will often find, uh, find used stuff that you can get uh, more or less cheap. Okay, um, as you can see, a matrix keyboard basically works like this. We have the rows and the columns. And when you press a button, for example here, button one is pr uh, pressed, then row one, the pin one and column one uh, is shorted and that can be detected uh, by the Arduino. And it will basically ask, uh, cycle through the columns and the rows and then detect if a button is uh, switched. And um, the Arduino um, software does the same. Um, so you only have to define the row pins and the column pins and define how many uh, rows and columns there are and then it will uh, work. So to configure it we have to undefine this line here, define the rows and columns. I'm using this cheap um, uh, matrix keyboard that you can buy from uh, AliExpress for a couple of dollars and um, yeah, so this should, I've connected it just like it's written here. So when we flash our um, firmware and we can uh, debug this with the serial monitor. Um, and I think it's a good way to test it this way. So now if I press a button, then the state for um, this button is changing. Okay, and you can see now, um, that all the buttons are working. And if you are trying to get your keyboard to work, I would recommend to test for each button um, that it works. And also maybe to write down uh, which number it has um, because this will be useful uh, very soon. Okay, so now that we know that um, this is working, we should um, now open the Python script again and here we move down to the um, to the matrix keyboard um, and here we enable it and um, now here are two options um, so as you can see we have numbers and letters and um, now the question is, what do we want to do with um, with those buttons? So um, in this case, uh, all of these are, are keys and um, for, for a lot of um, those uh, special CNC keyboards, we have um, special macro um, keys. So um, if we um, set this to zero, let's try this. Okay, so then we move the uh, Python file to the user bin directory. Then we go to Linux CNC and load up 
the uh, Arduino component. Now we should see a keyboard uh, keypad gener being generated. Now if we take a look uh, here, you can see uh, when, if I push a button, then um, the state of the key is updated, okay? So um, that can be used, for example, to match one of these keys to trigger, to, to start a machine, for example. But in some, in this case, I have also this numpad and I want to be able to control it, um, send MDI commands, for example, to write a letter and then a, a number. And for that, there is this uh, special functionality here. Um, this is this variable Linux keyboard input. And if we activate this, then uh, this uh, will, um, add another functionality so that this input uh, emulates actually a keyboard in Linux. And um, what we um, need to install to get this working is a tool called XDo tool. So basically, um, if you have a look at the documentation, you can see here it's written um, the tool is XDo tool. And we can install it by using this command here. So we can just copy and paste it um, like this. You can see I have already installed it. And to test if it works, uh, you have to copy this part here. And paste it to the terminal. And it should paste hello world like this. If this does work, then the X2 tool is correctly installed. And if it doesn't, then um, you can't fix uh, use this feature. So unfortunately, you will have to make sure that this works like intended, okay? So here you can see, uh, let's try to do it like, like one. Here, you can see it's written down, hello world. Okay, and uh, therefore you can see that this uh, tool is working. Um, if it doesn't, and uh, if you've been very careful, you can see that this is now a different system. Um, I loaded a different VM for this, uh, because on the old one, this didn't work for some reason, and I didn't bother to um, try to find the problem. Um, you can uh, see on the X2 tool website if there's uh, help for your specific system. Um, but if you can't get to work this uh, test, then unfortunately you won't be able to use a matrix keyboard on your system. Um, okay, but now let's go back to our Python script here. And there are now a couple of things that we have to um, do. So here is basically a list of all the keys. And uh, here we have to define the value of each key. Um, if you remember on the Arduino side, each key was encoded in a number. And uh, here each uh, number is um, assigned a value. And you can give it a, a number like one, two, three, or whatever, or a letter. But it can also be um, a special key, like for example, arrow up or down, left and right. Um, also the control key. So for example, here on the X2 tool website, uh, you can see a, a lot of um, uh, documentation on how to do this. Um, or uh, which which uh, types of data is allowed uh, to input here. Um, here then is a destination. So this is used to um, to uh, select what to do with those numbers. Okay. So if you remember here in Linux, we have now the five input pins um, that we can use uh, to to control stuff. Uh, and those correspond with these here. So if you set it to zero, a um, hull pin is created and uh, with the name of this letter here. 
um, if you set it to one and if you press one of those keys a number the number which is um, selected here is um, pressed on Linux and we can even um, write some text so for example if you have an MDI command that you have to type in over and over again then you can for example write it down uh, here I think I will just show it to you so we can save it okay and um, now let's see um, I want to show you the Python script as well as Linux CNC and the HAL pins. So let's open it up again. Here we have our Linux um, HAL pins. And now, so you can see here we have defined our numbers, here the destination. So let's try one of those uh, pins here. Um, I will go here. So, for example, when we now press a number like this, can see a number is written down. It's just how it would work with the keyboard. Um, so, and uh, we can also, if you see here, this um, letter here, um, the star shape, uh, I defined um, a string of yay. And we can, um, it's written here, as you can see. So if we test this out, I press this button, you can see it writes yay. Okay, so um, let's change this. So for example, I want to make this key um, to use this for tool change. So here I type M6 T um, and then uh, here I want to use this one um, for M. Okay, and so I have to change this because I don't want this to be a hull pin anymore. I want this to be a letter from the keyboard. And so now I modified this like that here. Uh, here is two because we have still the string. So now this is done. I save it, update the file in the user bin directory, and then we can uh, load up Linux CNC again. Now we should have one less uh, hull pin and we only have four in So that worked. And if we go to the MDI field, um, when we press now this button here, it's uh, it writes M6T uh, uh, and then we can enter like a, a number or something like this and uh, send it like, like that. Or we could move this guy and type in a command, whatever, and it will do, um, it can be used to do that as well. So um, if we want to, don't want to touch the go button, then there's a way to do this as well. So let's say we want to use the, the D button. So this guy here. So what we need to do is to change this to return like this and um, that should now work um, and as I said in the XU tool documentation all of the special keys like caps or shift and uh, and everything else is documented and you can also do uh, combinations for example uh, control C or something like that you could enter that as well um, we need to now um, change this one to uh, pin number one. So this is used as a key. And let's see what Linux CNC is doing with this. Okay, now we should see that uh, we have again one less uh, HAL input. And if we go to the MDI field again, we can now uh, use this, um, this key to enter our T command, enter a number and use D to send the command. Okay, so it's really useful. And like just like this, you could um, build yourself a keyboard and also have uh, special buttons like this. Okay, so uh, for example, uh, I mean, you know how this works. Um, so let's 
for example, we can use this call, uh, connect um, at macro. Let's create a signal macro and we are going to uh, combine this command with um, A. So like this, okay. And now if we press A, then the machine is triggered by an um, emergency stop, for example. Okay, so that's basically um, all the functionality of the keyboard. Um, one last thing, uh, the um, issue is um, right now that this only works when Linux C is running and the component is loaded. Um, it unfortunately isn't working all the time. Um, so that is the only down downside, I think. Um, so that you should uh, keep in mind. So this keyboard will only work if the connection with Linux CNC is active.